Hello everyone, I'm Andy Liu from NHL Draft Central, and with the 2019 NHL Draft just around the corner, it's finally time to do another mock draft. But this time, I have the pleasure to be joined by Brett from Miraki on Defense, Keith from Hawk Mock, Gio from LEGO Rock 99 Gaming, and Will from Scouting to complete the top 31. As we simulate the first round, we'll each take our respective team GM job and select who we think is the best fit for the organization. Unlike last time, this isn't a projection of the upcoming draft, but rather a fun little game. I'd love to know what would be your mock draft following those rules. And without waiting any longer, I invite Will to make the first overall selection. So the first overall draft pick in the 2019 draft is the uh, New Jersey Devils, and I'm taking Jack Hughes. Honestly, just has to have the most upside out of any pick in the, in the draft. I can understand the argument uh, around taking Capocacco, but just in terms of, you know, being a center, such an excellent skater, excellent guy in transition, there's no, to me, there's no real discussion to have. There's a little bit of a discussion to have about maybe who's better immediately, but I just think that you got to swing on upside when you're drafting first overall. Guys like Jack Hughes don't come along very often. So that's the guy at number one for the Devils. Um, so with the second pick and easily the, the, the least difficult, I had to make up my mind for my picks. Um, the second pick has to go to uh, Capocacco for the New York Rangers. And first of all, let's just talk about the amazing year he's had so far. He's fourth all time in points per game in the Liga uh, for U18 players and second in goals only to Sasha Barkov. Uh, one of World Juniors had the game, had the tournament winning goal in the World Juniors and also won a World Championship gold. Can't think of too many players that have done that, if any, uh, and was a top player in both, which is uh, no easy feat for any young player, let alone someone in his draft year. Um, so he, he really just blends a, a really nice combination of size, skill, and elite hockey IQ. And I think he's really self aware and self confident in who he is as a player. and. Um, it really allows him to play to those strengths and allows him to be consistent. And against men, he's already comfortable holding on to the puck and he doesn't just make the right play, but it's it's very often the better one. And especially when the ice shrinks to one third of the ice in the offensive zone, he's absolutely elite. Um, so I think he's going to make an impact right away for the Rangers. With the third overall pick in the 2019 NHL entry draft, the Chicago Blackhawks are pleased to select Vasily Podkolzin out of Russia. Obviously, Podkolzin has offensive gifts that just can't be taught, and he has some of the best offensive skills in this entire draft class. At this point, uh, toward, as we're getting closer to the draft itself, I've seen names penciled in here at this spot like Alex Turcotte or Bowen Byram, but to me, for the Blackhawks to have moved up nine spots in the draft lottery to the third overall spot here, they're not in the same kind of desperation draft pick mode that necessarily you know the LA Kings would have been or the Detroit Red Wings would have been so at this point you can really flex and you can kind of take whoever is there that you kind of see as a future high-end prospect in your system I see a lot of really high-end upside with this pick and I don't think Chicago necessarily has to rush into putting him into their system but still have a very 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 valuable piece for the future so again right here i'm taking vasily podkols in third overall with the fourth overall selection the colorado avalanche are proud to select from the ntdp alex turka the 5 foot 11 center is a complete two-way forward who plays in all situations he has a great top speed and quick hands that helps him play at high speed he can drive his line offensively and create many controls on entries. He owns some high-end puck skills and he makes his way through traffic with ease. He is versatile offensively thanks to his good vision and quick release. He isn't afraid of board battles and can hold his own against tougher opponents. He stays responsible defensively and is quick to come back when needed. The best two-way center of the draft in my opinion. Bowen Baram was also a great option at fourth, but you simply can't miss with Turcotte. Speaking of Bowen Byram, with the fifth overall pick, the Los Angeles Kings select from the Vancouver Giants, Bowen Byram. The best defender of the 2019 NHL draft, he seemed to get better as the year went on. Finishing off with 71 points in 67 games played, Byram was the top defender on a young Vancouver Giants team, and he led the WHL playoffs in scoring. That's something a defender has never done before. Byram is gifted offensively, 
He's great and dynamic, fluid skater, and he's got to work a little bit more on his defensive game going into the next level, but he's got all the tools to succeed as a number one defender in the NHL. Playing for the Los Angeles Kings, he's been kind of labeled as a guy who models his game after Drew Doughty, so that's a little bit of a fun comparison there to make as they will be teammates going forward. But Byram, he's got top line potential and he's going fifth overall to Los Angeles. The sixth overall pick in this year's NHL draft, the Detroit Red Wings are taking Kirby Dak from the Saskatoon Blades. Honestly, if you remove a relatively large portion of the season this year, he was one of the hottest hottest scoring forwards for the Western Hockey League. Honestly, I got to think he has probably the highest upside in this draft outside of the top two. If he can hit his gear on a more consistent basis, he could be one of the most devastating centers to come out of this draft. Now, the Detroit Red Wings already have someone named Dylan Larkin on their team, and the idea of Dylan Larkin and Kirby Dak playing on the same team down the line, there was a lot of different options that you could go with, but the combination of size, skill, the amount of ease with which Kirby Dak plays the game, you know, it just takes it a long way for me. So I think that someone like Dak is going to be a great fit in Detroit, a real high skill program that's done a great job drafting recently. So I really do think that there were other really good choices around here, but if I'm swinging for the fences, I'm going for Kirby Dak. So at seven, um, I think Buffalo has, like we talked about in the chat, uh, Buffalo has a lot of work to be done. When you have a chance to take a player who I think has a truly special skill set that, that makes him the BPA here, and for me that has to be Cole, Cole Caulfield, who is truly a, I don't want to say a trans, transcendent scorer, but his, his scoring toolkit is really what entices me here at number seven. So already the uh, US NCDP goals record all time. And when we look at what it takes to be an elite NHL scorer, you first and foremost have to have a, a high hockey IQ, uh, being able to go to the, to the open spots of the ice. Uh, if you know uh, whether or not to pass off and find a better option to get the puck back for a better uh, shot attempt. Um, so I really think the high hockey IQ is there for Caulfield. And then when you look at scores in the NHL that put up 35, 40 goals, you're either a high volume shooter or you have some trait in your shot that makes it elite. And to me, Caulfield has both of those. Um, his shot comes off of his stick like a slave shot. It's unreal. The, his ability to get his shot off accurately and hard is is some of the craziest things I've, I've seen, to be quite honest. And um, as far as high volume shooting goes, he was second on the US NTDP with 4.6 shots per game. Will be interesting to see how that translates into higher levels of hockey, um, but he's, he's definitely shown that shooters got to shoot. And I think Cole Caulfield is, has the opportunity to be an amazing goal scorer in the NHL. With the eighth overall pick in the 2019 NHL entry draft, the Edmonton Oilers are pleased to select Dylan Cousins. Now, if Cousins wasn't on the board, I might have taken somebody here like Peyton Krebs, who did a lot with very little around him this season, which is something that Edmonton could really use because they're so hot and cold on offense per night. But right here, the fact that Dylan Cousins is still on the board, it means that Cousins fell into Holland's lap. Ken Holland doesn't like to move up in the draft. He doesn't like to move back. He just kind of likes to stay put, and he, you'll find good talent on the board regardless of where he's at. And the fact that Cousins is here, a true kind of power forward with a really high-end offensive game, fast north-south speed, good 200-foot player. So again, right here with the 8th overall pick, Dylan Cousins to the Edmonton Oilers. With the ninth overall selection, the Anaheim Ducks are proud to select from Kootenay in the WHL Peyton Krebs. The 5'11 center is a complete two-way forward that can play in all situations. Krebs stays involved in all three zones at all times and never takes a shift off. He has a great motor and can drive his line offensively. He has a great vision and he is versatile in the offensive end. His 19 goals and 68 points in 64 games might be underwhelming for some but are still pretty impressive knowing his team had difficulty scoring all season. I believe he can become a number one center or a great number two center at the NHL level. Similar play style to Jonathan Taze. Not only do I think Krebs is the best player available at this point, but he also fit nicely into Anaheim's style of play. With the 10th overall pick in the NHL entry draft, the hometown Vancouver Canucks are proud to select Trevor Zagras. 
Zegris is a player who a lot of Vancouver fans most likely wouldn't have thought would have been available at this spot, but Zegris is an elite offensive mind who is able to playmake like there's no tomorrow. A guy who was second in the US NTTP in assists and third in points overall, he has been playing with Jack Hughes on quite a bit of lines on the power play, etc., and his playmaking ability is really good, especially with that patented behind the back pass. He's a smart player, offensively gifted, and playing him alongside of Pedersen and Besser as a left winger or as a center down the line on a power play is going to be really great for the city of Vancouver. With the 11th overall pick in the NHL draft, the Philadelphia Flyers are taking Alex Newhook. I think he's one of the most undervalued players in the draft. He comes from a lower level league in the BCHL, but this is a league that's better than it's been in the last few years. Just a tremendous amount of talent with him on a really, really talented team. He looks not out of place in all areas of the ice, although his defense could come a little bit of a ways. This is the 11th overall pick, though, that we're talking about, and there's just about as much upside at 11 here as you could want. Uh, really tremendous skater in transition, just as dangerous a goal scorer as he is a playmaker. Great vision. When he has his motor running, he really, really has it running. After a couple of years, hopefully rejuvenating Boston College's college program, I think he's going to be a really good fit down the middle with guys like Claude Giroux and Sean Couturier as they're going to start riding off into the sunset. Him and Nolan Patrick, I think, are going to be major, major pieces of the team moving forward. And I just feel like the fit and the play style is right there for Alex Newhook in Philadelphia. At number 12, the Minnesota Wild take one of my favorite players of the draft, Matthew Boldy. And uh, really in my eyes, Boldy's value lies in his offensive versatility, which I think would make a great fit for the Wild, who are in a bit of a transition period. Um, Boldy's game is predicated on an elite hockey IQ that allows him to thrive in multiple offensive roles. And really, I think he's fantastic at making the most out of the space that's given to him in and below the circle. He's constantly moving and reacting off of his teammates, and he can facilitate offense as the high-end playmaker and can also act as a trigger man with a solid shot. And sneakily, I think he's one of the most creative players in the draft, actually, with, with some very, very solid hands. and. Uh, where I think he's going to have an impact on, on his team and on his line mates is, is, is the little things that he does that necessarily don't show up on the score sheet, but um, his brain for the game and his ability to anticipate and make the little things go the way uh, pushing play forward is what's going to make him a, a top 10 player in this draft, in my opinion. With the 13th overall pick in the 2019 NHL entry draft, the Florida Panthers are pleased to select Marit Cedar from the German uh, Adult League in the DEL. This to me is one of those picks where this could either be the best pick of the draft in a couple of years, or it could be kind of an average pick at the, in a couple of years. But as of right now, to me, the fact that he interviewed with 31, all 31 teams at the NHL scouting combine means that there's league wide interest, literally. So this guy could really kind of go anywhere. So why not take him right here with this pick? Good uh, position for him to be in on a Panthers team that has a lot of offensive gifts already, but maybe not as many defensive talents as they would like. So by building up that back end with somebody that already plays, like I said, in an, in an adult league, and he played extremely well in that league with good size, good physicality, could translate really easily to the NHL going forward. So for me, this is a very, very smart pick, and I am very happy to take Cedar right here with the 13th overall selection. With the 14th overall selection, the Arizona Coyotes are proud to select, from Brian Nass in the SHL, Victor Söderström. The 5'11 defenseman is a versatile 2 -way D. He has some excellent puck moving skills and he can create many controls on exit and entries using his great agility and descent speed. He has an excellent first pass and he can restart the attack quickly. Although he showcased some flashes of iron skills in the junior levels, he played a very safe and effective game in the SHL. He was able to hold his own against bigger and tougher opponents. Soderstrom doesn't have the highest upside, but he is a very safe bet at this point and the best player available in my opinion. With the 15th overall selection, the Montreal Canadiens are proud to select Philip Broberg. Broberg is a guy who, in my opinion, has some of the highest upside for defenders in this draft. It's just that his floor is a little bit low, too. Broberg is a guy who played in the Elskvenskin this season, and he led that league in U18 points with 9 points in 40-ish games. He's a great skater, one of the best defender skaters in this draft, and a guy that the Montreal Canadiens fans have really been asking for for the past few weeks. 
Broberg most recently won the Best Defender Award at the U18's World Juniors, an award that was previously won by Adam Bogfist, Mira Heiskanen, and Adam Fox. If Broberg is able to work on his hockey IQ and his decision making, he's got a lot of room to work with when it comes to being an effective NHL player. With the 16th overall draft pick, the Colorado Avalanche select Bobby Brink from the Sioux City Musketeers. Nobody is more polarizing than Bowler than Bobby Brink so far this season, uh, but I will say that it might be a little bit overblown. His team scored about half as many goals per game when he was not on the ice this season with an injury. On average, he had points on about half of their goals, something no one else in this draft comes even close to. He scores just about as many goals, if not more, than he assists on. He is one of the most creative and skilled playmakers that I've been able to find in this draft. Nobody involves themselves in offense as much as he does. The only knock on his game is his skating. If he can learn how to skate over the next couple of years, we should all be looking out as one of the looking out for Brink as one of the biggest steals of the draft. With Kaliev available, that may have also been a big swing as well, but I've seen a lot more of Bobby Brink and I really, really like a lot more of what he brings, especially with the way he approaches the game. So I think this is kind of a no-brainer for the Colorado Avalanche to take a gamble on him and see what happens. So at 17, the Vegas Golden Knights are proud to select Thomas Harley out of the OHL. Um, Vegas, after losing Eric Brandstrom, Nick Suzuki, still have Cody Glass though, but I think they just need to restock their high-end prospect cupboard. Um, and it, it's crazy to me that they've been such a crazy team and they still have such a deep prospect pool. Um, the, the way I think the game is going, it's paramount that defenders have mobility and Harley's entire game is built upon his strong skating foundation. Um, at 6'3", the skating is not just good for his size, it's it's good period, especially his first two steps. They're explosive. He doesn't need a lot of room to build up speed, and he's especially strong at accelerating out of a backwards crossover. And when you partner this with his offensive creative creativity and vision, Harley reminds me a bit of Thomas Shabbat when activated from the point or influencing a rush in transition. And I especially like how after he makes a pass, he his feet uh, activate to transport him to a position of strength. Uh, now, defensively, due to his skating and lengthiness, uh, he's very rangy, which I think is very appealing to teams, although I think he sometimes relies a bit too too much upon those skills. But um, And when those are coupled, he's very mistake-prone and will have to be something he'll have to improve on with maturity. But remember, he's, he's barely eligible for this draft. With the 18th overall selection in the 2019 NHL Entry Draft, the Dallas Stars are pleased to select Vile Hinula from Finland and the Finnish Liga. To me, if you're Dallas and you're looking to just keep building up, you know, best player available type situations, to me this makes the most sense. He, Hinula is currently ranked by NHL Central Scouting as the fourth best European skater, so, you know, there's definitely a lot of upside in, in their ranking system uh, compared to, like I said, some draft boards that are out currently. He's a bit undersized, but he did play about 20 minutes uh, a game in the Finnish Liga. He did put up a handful of points, and it looks like that could translate pretty quickly to the pro level here in North America. So again, right here with this pick, I'm taking Vinny Hinula, 18th overall by the Dallas Stars. With the 19th overall selection, the Ottawa Senators select from Barry in the OHL, Ryan Suzuki. The six-foot center is a tremendous playmaker. He has an amazing vision and he set up partners with such ease. His trademark cross-eyes passes are always very dangerous offensively. He has an high hockey IQ and he reads the play very quickly. He is creative with the puck and can be really deceptive. He is also an excellent skater and puck handler. He is not the most physical player and he tries to stay away from the action which he will need to work on before jumping to the next level. Should be a great fit with Brady Katschuk and Colin White. Great upside and the best player available at the 19th spot in my opinion. With the 20th pick in the NHL entry draft, the New York Rangers are proud to select from the US NTDP Cam York. Now after they drafted Capo Caco second overall, the Rangers are available for a defenseman and Cam York is the best one on the board in my opinion. A guy who was the number one quarterback on the US NTDP, playing with guys like Jack Hughes and Cole Caulfield, he was the highest point producer for a D-man on that team. He was over a point per game, and he's following in the steps of guys like Zach Marinsky and Quinn Hughes going to the University of Michigan come the fall. Cam York is an offensive, dynamic defenseman who's engaged at all areas of the ice, always getting into the play, always blocking shots. He plays with a high gear all the time, and the Rangers are going to really like 
a York and a Fox pairing going into their future. With the 21st overall selection in the NHL draft this season, the Pittsburgh Penguins select Philip Tomasino from the Niagara Ice Dogs. Now, I've watched more and more of Tomasino as the year went on. I just really think there's a great fit here between Jim Rutherford and his Pittsburgh Penguins and Philip Tomasino. Just a really reliable two-way center. Yes, he played with really good line mates, but the more I watched, the more I really liked. Really reminded me of a similar profile to a Dylan Cousins, maybe just not as much upside. Responsible player in both ends, good enough speed to get up the ice, good enough skill, can really win a lot of puck battles, fight his way through traffic, set up a play, score goals. He really just brings a really nice all-around offensive package. I'm not certain there's a huge amount of upside here, but when you're the Pittsburgh Penguins, you need guys who on entry-level contracts can jump in, chip in, and maybe there's something else there. So I think that at 21, they make a good pick here with a really high floor, potentially a lower ceiling, but I do think there's another bit there for Tomasino to hit. I think this is also a good fit for Jim Rutherford as he's the kind of person who really likes the more personality-driven type guys. So I think there might be a bit of something in that with Tomasino on that Ice Dogs team, but I do like the kid. So I think Pittsburgh makes a good pick and takes Tomasino at 21. At 22, the LA Kings, or I should say Keith's LA Kings, take Niels Hoglander, one of my favorites this year as, as a dark horse, and he arguably has the best hands in this draft, and he's very creative, not only with his elusiveness and his shiftiness with the skating, but also with his playmaking. Um, playing in the SHL this year, I was extremely impressed with his poise to hold on to the puck and make skilled plays while using his slipperiness to get through gaps, and I think it's shown that his skill set can translate against men, and what I love about him is not only his confidence in his skills, but also that he's always in motion. With or without the puck, he keeps his feet moving, which allows him to play with pace. And he has the hockey sense to calculate what space to take. And I think that's essential. That's, that's an essential trait for a smaller player. Um, so he's electric. he has an electrifying skill set uh, to be a game breaker. And I also love that he's a little feisty too. With the 23rd overall pick in the 2019 NHL entry draft, the New York Islanders are pleased to select Pavel Dorofeyev. Dorofeyev played this year in the KHL in 23 appearances, and he only put up two points in that stint, but the fact that he held in that league for 23 games means that he is mature enough to play in that league. Now, I know he's not necessarily the biggest guy in the draft, you know, six feet, it's not undersized, it's not oversized, it's kind of right about where you'd expect a player at this age to be. Looks like he can hold his own though, um, you know, could, he's not a sexy skater, but he's a good sound skater, he can jump into the play. His shot is really effortless. It seems like he's got some power in it in his shot that's just so natural and comes to him really easily. Um, good, good shot versatility as well uh, and some good uh, playmaking abilities. Obviously, this is kind of more of a pet project, but if you can get the most out of him, then I think this makes sense. The Islanders are getting a nice offensive piece here could uh, be paired with a lot of the prospects they already have going forward. And this could just be another piece that brings more fans into their new arena at Belmont Park. So right here again, Pavel Dorofeyev. With the 24th overall selection, the Nashville Predators select from Moncton in the QMJHL, Jacob Petit. Petit might be only 5'9", but he plays like he's 6'3". He is responsible in his own zone and plays with intensity in both ends of the ice. He holds his own very well against tougher opponents and loves to get in front of the net. Very similar playstyle to Brendan Gallagher. He has some very quick feet, which gives him a great agility and edge work. He distributes the puck very well and he loves to set up teammates offensively. He has a great vision and his decision making with the puck is excellent. He also owns some decent finishing skills. Once again, the best player available at this point in my opinion. With the 25th overall pick, the Washington Capitals are selecting from the Hamilton Bulldogs, Arthur Kaliev. Kaliev got 102 points in 60-something games played for the Hamilton Bulldogs in the OHL as the best U18 goal scorer and point producer. He had 51 goals. Kaliev is a complete sniper, big-bodied player who dominates on the power play, and there are some issues with his game that have pushed him back further in the rankings, things like work-related issues and engagement issues, but at its core, Kaliev is a guy with a great shot, arguably one of the best shots in the draft class, and playing for a Washington Capitals team with a big guy who's got a big shot in Alexander Ovechkin, you know that the connection is kind of there to have that 
play style kind of translate. So going forward into the future, the Washington Capitals already have the players that can succeed with a guy like Ovechkin. So building a team around a guy like Kaliev definitely seems like a possible outcome too. With the 26th overall pick in this year's NHL draft, the Calgary Flames select Nick Robertson from the Peterborough Peets. Now, the Flames are no strangers to drafting skill really high in the draft, or pretty much skill throughout the entire draft, and they're going to do it again here. Nick Robertson is one of the youngest players available in this year's draft, and every single time I've watched him, I've come away really impressed. He really reminds me of like a Ryan Suzuki profile, just a really raw playmaker who can move really well with tremendous amounts of skill. I think Nick Robertson has the potential to be one of the biggest steals to come out of this draft relative to where he's going to be picked. And I think the Calgary Flames are the perfect fit. They love those high skill guys. They're going to let them gestate. They're going to let them grow. And I think he's going to follow a similar trajectory to his brother and just keep scoring more and more and more as his OHL year progresses. And I think long term, even if he doesn't pan out as a center, he didn't play there much this year. I think as a scoring, playmaking winger for the Calgary Flames down the line, I think he's going to be a perfect, perfect fit especially with how young he is and how effective he was, considering how young he was and how up and down in terms of his health that he was this year, from what I can recall. But overall, just a very consistent playmaker all year long, and I think it's a great pick at 26 for Calgary. So at 27, uh, the Tampa Bay Lightning take a bit of a reach. Uh, I think real, like in real life, uh, if I was Tampa and I really liked Braden Tracy, I definitely would try to trade down here to get a bit more value out of this pick. But... Um, I just wanted to, I felt like talking about Braden Tracy, so here we are. Um, and so I have Tracy at, thir- uh, not at 31, but in my top 31. And I could also see Tampa Bay being a good fit with Tracy as they don't necessarily need to rush him. They can be patient with him as they have, they still have quite a lot of players coming up through their system. Second in all situation scoring and at five on five for the WHL U18s. Absolutely, I think his production should be taken with a grain of salt as 80 of his 81 points were in tandem with at least one of just Justin Almeida or Tristan Langett, but he wasn't just a passenger in my eyes. Um, I thought he was creative with the puck and he was able to read and react off of those two to create the top line of the WHL. And I think as a WHL rookie being able to adjust to top minutes with highly skilled players and be able to not just produce but elevate that line should speak volumes to his hockey IQ and his mental makeup. And I think that's significant when we're talking about a prospect here uh, with the growth mindset because it seemed to me like he rose to the occasion he didn't shy away from the challenge of trying to keep up with and add to this line he's he's very raw in terms of his skating uh, and could stand to add some explosiveness and he hasn't shown that he can be a play driver but i do think he's smart enough and creative enough to become one Uh, and i think in that sense he's a little bit like matthew boldy and the fact that he does what his team has asked of him and his ability to analyze the game and incorporate his skill within that uh, allows him to be highly effective. Um, So yeah, Braden Tracy. With the 28th overall pick in the 2019 NHL entry draft, the Carolina Hurricanes select Spencer Knight from the USNTDP. Spencer Knight is actually a really good puck moving goaltender and the fact that he can get the puck out of his own zone up ice very quickly and adapt to all kinds of situations means that he is a good goaltender. Some people are lauding this kid as the potential U- best US born goaltender of all time. Now of course we won't know that projection for the next you know 15, 20 years if that's true, but the fact that people are even saying it means that you do have an option here of having a franchise goaltender in your system which, by the way, you don't have too many great goaltenders in your system, not to knock all of them, but just saying how it is. So to me, this is the best pick. It's gonna take a little bit of convincing to get my owner on board, but once he is on board, there's no doubt in my mind I'm running up to the stage taking Spencer Knight. With the 29th overall selection, the Anaheim Ducks are proud to select from Sherbrooke in the QMJHL, Samuel Poulin. The six foot two left winger is a complete two way forward. He has a powerful stride and is very mature physically. He stays involved in the defensive end and is always the first to jump on the forecheck and backcheck. He is very effective in board battles thanks to his strong upper and lower body. On a team with no superstar, Poulin was able to carry his team to the QMJHL playoff with 8 goals and 14 points in 10 games and stood out as a true leader on and off the ice. He also possesses a tremendous work ethic and compete. Poulin doesn't have the highest upside, but I can't see him not reaching the NHL. Oddly enough, I see a lot of Maxime Cantoin in Poulin, and in my opinion, he will fit perfectly Anaheim's style of play. 
Quick disclaimer, as we are shooting this video, the Stanley Cup Finals are not yet finished, so the 30th and 31st pick are still up to grab. Since Boston finished the regular season with more points, we'll give them the 31st pick. Hopefully we're not jinxing them. With the 30th overall pick, the Buffalo Sabres are proud to select from the lecky in the Métis, Patrick Pistola. Pistola is a young Finn who didn't have an NHL comparable because he played in Finland's second highest tier league. He wasn't in the league a full time, but his time in the Métis was incredible, putting up over a point per game and dominating that stage. He really put eyes onto him at the World Under 18s, getting five goals in five games, and he's a guy who's risen up the draft rankings quite a bit heading in towards the draft. He's a guy who I wouldn't be surprised if he went earlier, but the skill set and his offensive abilities, the shot, the IQ, the passing, and the overall intensity in the offensive zone really screams a dynamic left winger who could potentially make an impact at the next level. Closing out the first round of the 2019 NHL draft, the Boston Bruins. Maybe Boston Bruins, I guess. Stanley Cup champions, we'll see. Uh, select Connor McMichael, center from the London Knights. Now, I've seen a lot of McMichael, and I really love the offensive part of his game. He plays really smart in the offensive zone. He has a lot of speed, but doesn't always need to use it to his advantage. Really good in transition. I think he's got NHL center upside written all over him. Really smart in the offensive zone, sneaks his way into high danger areas. He's a player who I've tracked multiple games of, and he gets about 80% of his shots from in front of the net, or at least a little bit further out in between the face-off dots. He just knows how to shoot the puck. He knows how to play, make a play. He knows how to score. He knows how to just play an all-around offensive game. And as a defensive intensity can get a bit more consistent game in and game out and shift to shift, I think he's going to be a really dangerous two-way player. But at the very least, he's going to be a great middle six center that I think you can rely on in a number of different offensive situations. Thank you for watching. I strongly invite you to check out Brett, Keith, Will, and Gio on their respective platform. They all make amazing content and you'll definitely enjoy it. I'll put links in the description and comments below. Subscribe for more NHL draft related videos and click here to watch my previous 2019 NHL draft scouting report. I'll see you for the next one.